So I trust put out an email. They said, hey, great news. Uh, we're switching from our custodial partners of Coinbase Custody and Fireblocks, or what I thought was. And we're going to be using Fortress Trust. And I'm like, I don't know who Fortress Trust is. Why do you guys do this to me? We just had a tumultuous 2022. Now you got to switch things up. I don't understand. So I'm like, you guys got to get somebody on the show because I don't understand what's going on. I know a lot of people don't either. So let's get somebody. I'm just going to tell you there's going to be a couple parts here where I'm going to give them a pushback, especially on the yield. But just take a listen. Be right back to sponsor of the show I Trust. And what they came out and they said that there's going to be a little bit of a changes. So what I want to do is uh, bring in somebody to uh, help us out. And that is uh, Jared Feldman. And he is a VP of client experiences at iTrust. So Jared, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me as usual. Yeah. So we had done, now I've been with you guys now for two years and it's a very uh, reasonably simple process. I don't want to pay a bunch of taxes when I get older, 59 and a half or 65, whatnot for my Roth IRA. And I felt it necessary to put that into me personally, a Roth IRA. This is the same thing that Peter Thiel did. He, that's how he turned two thousand dollars into five billion dollars. There's a link in the description. You can find out what I'm talking about there. But essentially, use a Roth IRA, and we're talking about crypto and digital assets for ourselves. But there was a tweet that was put out, and actually an email that came about as well, and it said that you guys are moving uh, and integrating with Fortress Trust Company, and it means it says here instant KYC processing, streamline onboarding, large variety of crypto assets, additional alternative assets, and more. I always like that section and more. So talk to us real quick about who exactly Fortress is and why did you guys change? Because it looks like things were doing uh, okay using uh, Fireblocks and Coinbase Custody. For sure. And uh, you and I actually have similar anniversaries with iTrust Capital. I just hit uh, two, two plus years myself. Man. But it's a, it's a really good question. And I think any sort of announcement like this begs questions and we enjoy creating transparency for our clients. I have an expression that I really like and it's what, what got you here isn't necessarily going to get you there. Mm -hmm. And this is a prime example of that because we've had a great experience with our current trust company. It's called M2 Trust Services. We're going to be moving on to Fortress because we see an opportunity to plug in to, to more modern infrastructure, especially from a digital asset standpoint. And I think that the nature of the question as well is a good opportunity to briefly talk about our structure, because the way that we work, there's a lot of regulatory compliance that's baked in to our company because of the fact that we're an IRA provider and any sort of trust company that we use is an IRA provider. So if you look at M2, for example, they leveraged Coinbase Prime as well as Fireblocks when it came to institutionally storing the digital assets. But at the same time, their legal claim to be able to provide an IRA is through their chartered trust entity, right? So there's custodianship of the IRA, and then there's actual physical custodianship of the assets. So Fortress has their own chartered trust through the state of Nevada, and they, they leverage, as, as, as far as I know, fire blocks when it comes to the institutional storage for the digital assets themselves. Gotcha. Okay. So that would take us into, you know, a little bit of uh, how I get, but let's just break it down into a little bit more and get into the, uh, we'll say the minutia of what's going on. So when we take a look here, what exactly are they doing that is new as opposed to just custodianship? Because you guys put out, uh, you had a, a blog post and so you said, here's what uh, Fortress brings to iTrust Capital, plus 30 crypto trading pairs. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I mean, you guys you guys have that. You guys have 30. You guys have a ton of trading pairs, actually, for uh, in, in the IRA. And you have two metals. You got gold and silver, which is, I own both of those, as a matter of fact. And also, you talk about uh, blockchain payment infrastructure, embeddable account compliance and payment widgets. You said supervised by the Nevada Banking Commission. That's great. Qualified custodian under SEC regs, uh, Advisors Act of 1940, USC 408. And then you talk about the audits, which of course is great. Monthly penetration testing by independent firms. And the team itself, it looks pretty good. But uh, again, what are, they, what are they bringing to us besides just the custodianship? So when you talk about your show in particular, especially your show and, and the theme over the last few, few months, it's almost like your campaign 
no scams, 0% on exchanges. You're, you're, you're kind of hitting all these uh, essential food groups for you and your audience. Our audience, while we have a lot of people who are content and love the platform the way it is, mm-hmm. we get a lot of feedback from people, a lot of constructive criticism, a lot of things that people want to see. And it's our responsibility to respond to that criticism and that feedback because we don't just want to stay complacent and keep the platform the way that it is. Right. So when you look at the fortress opportunity, that's what it really brings for us is the opportunity to deliver on a lot of these requests in a more timely manner. Just since I started working at iTrust Capital over two years ago, people have wanted to see uh, dollar cost averaging and right. being able to systematically withdraw money from their bank account based on when they receive a paycheck. People want new asset classes. People want yield on their USD. And these are things that we have not been able to deliver on. We've been great at delivering on other things. We did a beta for staking. Uh, We have conditional transactions, but we still want to do more order types. We still want to have better liquidity options. We still want uh, tighter spreads on trading. We really want to continue to be ambitious and and then the fortress agreement and the arrangement with them is really a reflection of that ambition. So we look forward to having some of those things rolled out by mid year. The most exciting one for me, when you look at the press release is the yield on us dollar, because people are not able to get sufficient yield on their fiat in the legacy world right now. We're a digital IRA provider. We've mostly attracted gold and silver and digital asset enthusiasts. And now we have an opportunity to attract people who might just want to get some yield on their cash while being able to allocate into some of these digital and physical commodities. Yeah, I'm with you, except for the yield. That has been a dirty word. I'm sorry, Jared, this has been a dirty word, uh, especially with all the exchanges. It seems like like the yield, when you do things with, with yield, we we saw that in the ponds or the different problems with the different exchanges, we'll say like a Celsius and like a Voyager and like an FTX and whatever else and BlockFi. When you talk about yields, I mean, that could be somebody down the road where you guys are offering that. Me personally, I wouldn't go for it, but I will tell you, I do like the, the aspect of the dollar cost averaging, the ability to put in stop orders and stop losses, things like that, and actually do a little bit more of a trading within your uh, IRA account because it is a it is a tax free trade that you are doing as long as you you know wait, wait that time and then a host of other things that that, that you uh, you touched on so these things are good and I will just uh, would like to talk about this real quick I think it's important especially Do you mind if I kind of touch on that yes that yield thing for go a second right ahead. so love love that you brought it up is one of the first things that I thought of as well mm-hmm. there's a big difference between offering yield on a digital asset or even on a stable coin versus offering it through a cash suite program that's affiliated with FDIC insured USD. So what we'll do is as we roll out that program, we're going to create a, a painful amount of disclosures and create a lot of transparency for people so they can see why our program is going to be inherently different than those programs. In fact, when we structure it and launch it, it's going to look and feel more like a legacy just general yield product on cash, like you would get through a high yield savings account, rather than something that was through um, a a yield program that operated more like a high risk hedge fund product, like some of these other exchange products we saw. Great. I will uh, wait in the background, see how it all goes for you guys and make a decision later. Okay. Appreciate it. So on this one, on the last part here, which is we're talking about on balance sheet. I know you guys had talked about this before, especially for yourself, but with Fortress, they make it very clear. I, I like this whole part. As a regulated financial institution, if anything happens to Fortress, then the banking commissioner's staff takes control to ensure an orderly, secure transition of assets or assets and data to another trust company or bank. Assets are not on the balance sheet, which is what happened with FTX. All assets are held FBO for benefit of and segregated for each customer individually and have no risk of third-party claims associated with Fortress. Essentially, what they're saying is there is no commingling of funds. So anything you want to add on this one? I think it's a positive, definitely. And it's really timely, right? It's when you look at the the news and a, a lot of the things that have made waves through social media uh, over the last month or so. And the one of the emphasis has been this idea of qualified custody for assets. And when you look at a company that has to keep funds in qualified custody, 
it has to be off balance sheet. Well, what does off balance sheet mean? There was a lot of news last year pertaining to retail clients who found out that the exchange they used actually would keep the funds for themselves potentially in the event of bankruptcy. Why is that? Because those exchanges keep client funds on balance sheet. Keeping it off balance sheet makes it not subject to creditors in the event that something bad were to happen to the underlying company. So it's such a powerful, important concept that people would have overlooked even just three years when our company was established. And now our aspect of qualified custody might become the standard for digital asset uh, providers throughout the country. So we're really excited by that concept. That sounds good. So, so look, Jared, thanks for stopping by. That explains a little bit more about what's going on because it was, I just was looking at it. I'm like, I wonder why they transferred over because it looked like things were going pretty smoothly. But like you said, if you want to go into the next, next part, what got you there is, <laughs> isn't always the same thing. And then very lastly, true. lastly, yes, very true. Last I'll just say, if you're looking for a link to iTrust, this is an affiliate link, just so everybody knows if you can't stand affiliate links, Go right to iTrust Capital. I'm sure you can find the website itself. But if not, there's a link in the description. Looks just like that. There's also a video about how uh, uh, iTrust works and how I've set it up and everything else. But that is it. So, Jared, again, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. For sure. Happy to be here. All right. Everybody, let's jump back. Okay, that's it. So I hope that made sense. I want to thank uh, uh, iTrust for coming on. Again, the whole thing with the yield gives me PTSD. I'm not a big fan of that. But we did talk afterwards. He goes, Rob, you understand we're not giving 10, 14 percent, 16 percent. It's like one, one and a half percent, you know, kind of like, you know, T bills and things like that. I go, you know what? That's great. Still not going to touch it. So I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. That seems to work. And off you go. You can do whatever you want to do. It's just the way that I'm going to go. And that's it. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.